You probably remember from high school algebra seeing problems like this. A photography student wants to take a picture of four pieces of fruit arranged in a line. An apple, a banana, a pear, and a pumpkin. So in this uh, somewhat contrived problem, uh, you might be asked, in how many ways can the student arrange the fruit? And so we can look at some of the examples here. Maybe we have pumpkin, pear, banana, apple, or maybe we have pumpkin, apple, banana, pear, or apple, banana, pumpkin, pear, or maybe apple, banana, pear, pumpkin. So you get the idea. You can list all these things out, and you probably remember from high school algebra that the answer is 24. There's four factorial ways of arranging the fruit. But for now, I want to look at each of these individual arrangements because each of these possible arrangements is known as a permutation. And I want to define a permutation. So how do we define this idea of a permutation? Well, the first thing that we did was we had a set. We had a whole bunch of fruit. So I could pick a set maybe of numbers, 1, 2, 3, and 4. It's a little bit easier to work with 1, 2, 3, and 4 than it is with apple, pear, banana, and pumpkin. So we have our set A, 1, 2, 3, and 4. And then what did we do? Well, we rearranged the things in the set. So another way to think of this is maybe as a map from a set A to itself. And so we can define a mapping, phi, that maybe takes 1 to 2, takes 2 to where 3 was, puts 3 where 4 was, and 4 where 1 was. So just basically rearranging everything. Another example, maybe we have uh, the same sets, A, 1, 2, 3, 4. And maybe we let phi mean uh, that 1 goes to 3, 2 stays right where it is, 3 goes to 4, and 4 goes to 1. Or maybe one more example of phi, maybe everything just stays right where it is. So these are all examples of rearranging things or permutations. So two things to note. First of all, two objects can't occupy the same location. In other words, phi is one to one. Think about what that means. Two objects can't be in the same place, so phi is one to one. In other words, you can't have one mapped to two, and three mapped to two. Every space is occupied. This is another way of saying that phi is on two. I have, if you look at the second set of A's there, everything there has something mapped to it. So this is another way of saying that phi is on two. So this uh, gets at the heart of what a permutation is. So the definition is, for any set A, a function phi, which goes from A to A, is called a permutation of A if phi is one to one and onto. Now we've been looking at sets of four objects, like one, two, three, and four. And so if we have a set A and then we have our function phi, which would go from A to itself, an example of a permutation maybe would take one to two, two to four, leave three alone, and take four to one. But we don't have to look at sets just of four objects. In fact, we don't even have to concentrate on finite sets. We could look at infinite sets. What about the set of integers? And so phi then would be a mapping from the set of integers to itself. And an example could be maybe phi of n equals n plus 5. And you could check that this is indeed 1 to 1 and onto, so it is a permutation. How about the set of real numbers? and let phi then be a mapping from the set of real numbers to itself. And an example could be 5x equals 8x minus 2. Again, you can check that this is a 1 to 1 and onto, so it is a permutation. So let's look at that example again. We have uh, the set A being 1, 2, 3, and 4, and then we have the set phi going from A to itself, A to A. And we had 5, 1 equals 2, 5, 2 equals 4, 5, 3 equals 3, and 5, 4 equals 1. So this gets to be kind of complicated. It's a little cumbersome to have to write this out every single time. So fortunately, there's a little shorthand that we can use to denote this permutation. Here's how it works. So start by taking a bracket. And we're going to have two rows of numbers here. And on the top row, you're going to write all of the things in the set A. So we have 1, 2, 3, and 4. And we're going to close the bracket. And on the bottom, you're going to write everything that these numbers are mapped to. So we see that 5, 1 is mapped to 2. So underneath the 1, I'm going to write a 2. 
And then we see that 5, 2 is mapped to 4, so underneath the 2, I'm going to write 4. And then 5, 3 is 3, so underneath the 3, I'm just going to write another 3. And then 5, 4 is 1, so underneath the 4, I'm going to write a 1. So this is a way of representing phi. This is a uh, shorthand for this permutation. Now I could write a completely different permutation, maybe tau. Could be, again, I'll have the brackets here. I'll have 1, 2, 3, and 4, and maybe 1 gets mapped to 3, maybe 2 stays where it is, maybe 3 goes to 1, and 4 stays where it is. So you can see how this works. Uh, this is much faster than having to actually write out what tau would do to every single number by writing tau of 1 equals 3, tau of 2 equals 2, and so on.